So, welcome everyone to the hopefully sort of final update. Probably most people are already annoyed and tired of this funny alternative musel ceiling clang stuff. If you want to know all the details, all the previous excessive live streams. Otherwise, this live stream I only uh, finally uh, went through and fixed enough of the stuff. You can now download this ISO here from dlt2sde.org binary slash 2019 uh, T2 minimal musel ceiling x86 64 revision 48700 something. Also in just six months since February 1000 revision. Welcome to our live here, only live on YouTube. So 1000 revisions in six months. Uh, our recurring unsuccessful one in Linux distribution stuff here, built from source and for all the amazing architectures. Um, to summarize ceiling um, from the LLVM project, the low level virtual machine alternative BSD also licensed new compiler stuff also used not only at Apple and maybe Google Android, but also well, WebAssembly, Mscripten and uh, 3D stuff. So Mesa 3D, also AMD, probably not Intel, or I don't know what, probably Novo also. Quite some 3D, uh, probably quite some embedded ones anyway. So excessively vastly used new industry, standard open source compiler technology stuff. And just for the curiosity, we wanted to build a, instead of GCC, a full Clang LLVM based system and we finally have done this. Started this project already maybe in April or whatever that was. I, I thought it was last month, but time flies by so fast. It was already April or something. Anyway, after the very first of proof, proof of concept, which I already fun fact run in a data center VM for some test, uh, testing stuff, I went ahead and updated stuff even more live on the previous days. Uh, today I fixed more, so this ISO, uh, yeah, some stuff was also broken just because of rebuilding, whatever changed in between, usual, whatever, the last six months or more, something that was binary incompatible for some other crazy reason, something of that sort. And now we can finally install this. So QEMO system, x86, whatever, enable KVM SMP2, 4 gig of memory. SD, by the way, don't really need that. Anyway, uh, so CD-ROM, usual CD-ROM boot, uh, C, so can, obviously you don't need boot C and boot D, but whatever. HDA musel tests that you can create so with your favorite either DD or QEMO image create something. Um, so still, even though I fixed a lot of stuff, still some manual tinkering required. So just press enter here. This is old fashioned MBR, master boot record bias. Next, I will work on EFI stuff for myself and all the fans in the family, uh, friends playing along at home. Zoom to fit. Um, so this is also, actually, wait a second, this is trying. Does it really try? Actually, okay, so stupidly, I improved this code already, but it's still not amazing, especially so it tries the installer, tries so also, by the way, fun fact, uh, nowadays mostly written in shell, which I find quite nice, maybe similar to uh, SGI IRIX or something of that sort. Uh, only the binary installer stuff is C, which we may also want to rewrite another day. Um, so all the stuff is shell, which I find pretty maintainable, just that Previously, we only used the CD-ROM. I have rewritten this already for more modern USB, removable storage still. It, it, it tries the first whatever it finds block device. Unfortunately, if you have a floppy emulation, then it tries floppy. Um, but even otherwise, it might, um, otherwise it might actually we could try without floppy, if we, but whatever, another day. So in any case, so on the P3, that should probably just work, at least it did for me the last time, under, or you just select it. So selecting is obviously here zero local device, second stage from local device. And then this is uh, in my case three, usually just press enter. So I have there some threshold of 100, uh, 200, three megabyte of memory or something. Then it's using the small second stage. I've reworked this also vastly if you're interested in that previous live stream there for the p3 because we are so memory limited so this now works again on systems as low as 256 megabyte of memory on the p3 we want the default in this case is two this is now intelligent encoded in bash amazing stuff um, choosing two already because we have enough memory 
some warnings. Yes, these warnings are also new, so you improve stuff and get some free warnings for free. Um, just some duplicate files. It's always, yeah, this small stuff. We could clean this further up another day. And um, unless you run this from a serial console, you want to press enter here uh, for the regular virtual consoles. Otherwise, you can also add the TTY as zero or whatever into the mix. Then to install this stone key mapping, if you need any, I usually use none, even as a German, don't really care much. The simple setup tool one stuff that um, this has already better FS file system, but usually you want to create a new one because there is none, like so. Uh, also partition, like edit partition map with whatever tool you want to use. So you want to do that first if you don't have a partition from the previous run like me now. And then uh, here starts this guess GUI stuff. Again, this is the only C part that we probably maybe want to rewrite another day also for more modern stuff another day or maybe something like that. And then install full system, install select packages. Theoretically, you could change them, but I don't really advise to do that. It's a relatively minimal system. Um, although this one, you see, although it has APR and subversion and half of XORG, because of Musil and Sealing, the alternative C library in the more strict non-GNU compiler, some of the stuff does not yet build and you're totally welcome to send me patches and try this out. So this is not production quality, right? I test an earlier snapshot of 14 days ago or so or something. I test in a VM in the data center for some web services, but I don't recommend you to run this. And this is um, as usual, people try T2 and then they just download the experimental alternative proof of concept images like this Musil one, so yeah. But that's what it is. Uh, also, so this is sometimes you see regressions in previous times. I would expect this etc fs tab is created. Cut, uh, and let's double check. I've not double checked this earlier. So yeah, it is created. I have no idea why uh, this doesn't work here. Um, I would, so if you want to debug this while the text doesn't show up there, uh, maybe a bug or regression or whatever uh, undefined use case of dialogue or whatever that was here, probably a dialogue. So yeah, fun fact, everything just works. But this small bugs, honestly, I've you've seen from the previous live streams, how long does everything take? And today I spent a couple of more hours getting this to work even as much as it does. Another day, I have more important stuff to do than the content of the ETCF step. Then, a key mappings, again, you can choose one. I have not tested if they work because I usually use none. Password test, today it works uh, also then. Uh, this is usually the time zone and usually this works. Just that for the Musil, although the T2 package tries to install the TSA data, I'm, I've never checked. So far you see all the many detail, details that you need to check if you run a distribution like that. And um, you probably, if you want to check this, this TSA data package doesn't build with Musil right now because it doesn't have a six this time zone compiler stuff there, which fun fact we could also, I think it's thick or so, yeah, time zone compiler. Um, not sure what's up with this um, or how Musil handles time zone right now, I don't care. So because there's nothing to, to select, this is a little bit, you could call it bug or inconsistency here of our setup tool one stuff. You can work around this. Uh, as I said, a little bit glitchy still. Yeah, just back. It, it's not really going back. It's just going out of this module and there is no back. This is why it continues a little bit counterintuitive, but yeah, trick 17 here. Date and time. This needs to be relatively accurate. Otherwise your YouTube live streaming doesn't work. Previous video below. And uh, locales, again, same stuff as with whatever. Not yet checked as with Musil. Best choose none, I usually choose none. Then the biggest gotcha here right now, but this is in general what I need to do next, and this is more important than dialogue showing the FS tab, is here this Grub2 module. This is totally bare bones because so far I've only used it on PowerPC, fun stuff only on T2, stuff first implemented on PowerPC. Um, so this does not work 100% amazing. And I, this will be in the next project and leave me in the comments below what do you want to see. Do you really want to see me tinkering two hours with if you booting or probably better not. I probably need to concentrate on AAA content here. 
Um, if you, so normally you would want to install this, but it doesn't really quite work now because this is the content of the crop. Maybe we fix this at the end of the live stream, maybe stay tuned for that. So right now this is a real bug, probably just some either logic bug in the shell script or mistyped function name because I copied this mostly from either grub1 legacy or jaboot there from jaboot from powerpc goodness no idea something of that sort so maybe we fix this later so right now um, this doesn't do something so you, if you don't fix this manually which is easy I show you in a second um, although this grub installs here into the MBR uh, so far so good no errors reported um, you can fix this by manually uh, running this create boot menu with installed kernel. So this should do automatically, but it doesn't. Certainly just a one line typo or one character typo. We take a look in a second. So just run this manually for now, whatever. Um, but this is more important than the FSTEP, so I will definitely fix this. Then some, yeah, also you see regressions org um, make what is whatever. I couldn't care less. I, doesn't don't reuse this tool so this is vintage legacy code from decades ago that probably even I have not done personally and yeah never use whatever if you want to of course it's always nice to fix all the small random small bits and pieces so you're totally welcome to send patches for the small stuff that I don't care oh we just remove all this old-fashioned what is whatever stuff that is already the whole installation and after the huge fight with this getting this to work which actually for half of the parts were just binary ABI inconsistencies there um, surprisingly smooth now I guess and the ISO by the way fun fact the ISO right now is larger um, because we have boot here in QM we can just use this install OS from disk and continue here uh, okay one one second small gotcha because this was power PC I have not yet tweaked this you need to change this here from Linux to uh, set for with compression and then it works and um, of course you want to edit this permanently also we yeah, are wondering a little bit that this x86 stuff still doesn't boot um, uncompressed kernels but yeah whatever that is the Linux kernel um, and that's it that is uh, also yeah considering how much effort it is and how much time and stuff I spent here significantly smoother than you would have expected after the drama that was the previous live streams. Um, certainly much more amazing. This is also the first full image after I tweaked a little bit of this init um, stuff that um, let me... what do we have best fit or something? No, how does it... Um, does it have here some... Full, well, full screen doesn't work because I have here two screens for OBS. Um, or maybe can we control plus minus does this... Ah, this does. Amazing stuff. Let's one, yeah. Um, just to show you not to have black borders. This is the first release of um, my side project here of making this init stuff look more amazing without systemd. Uh, previously, we had here smileys from decades ago when my friend and I did this in the basement. I didn't found this. So for nearly 20 years I was rocking this smiley is here from desktop projects. I didn't find this a professional enough anymore because we are professionals. So I um, spent some efforts and that is the latest incarnation. I probably leave it like this. I hope that looks pretty much cleaner here with this nice straight pipe symbols and okay and uh, fail. Um, and one small thing you see the designer in me and um, one small last thing that I will probably do is um, going through all the init scripts and remove all the dots because it's a little bit superfluous not to have dots on some but not all and then this other dotted line to the status anyway so maybe that's another small product for another night as a root password we have used test and um, we probably so uh, as a compiler ceiling actually I wanted while we were booting I was about to say um, ironically the ISO image is larger that is only because oh, well, mostly I've not yet double checked entirely but it's for the most part because CLang and LVM and some other um, packages are in there twice because I've rebuilt them because this is not an entirely clean build normally not how I would normally be doing that normally I only publish entirely clean builds from scratch I've not done this with this one because of the nature of this proof of concept stuff. So I'm only happy that it finally works for the most part. This, again, GNU GCC less 
Clang, um, usual stuff, totally not how you normally Linux distributions are. And um, I, ca I can't yet fully automatically bootstrap due to the nature of not all of those bits and pieces are upstream. Some of this stuff is a little bit chicken and egg, so there are some startup files, CRT begin, compiler RT, and one depends on the other, and then we can't. Uh, maybe compiler RT needs a C library, but the C, C library needs the startup files or the uh, compiler RT, uh, libgcc, whatever stuff, or all the built-in stuff for division and multiply by 64 or complex math and stuff. So they yeah, still need to figure this out, how to fix the last bits and pieces. So there is still a little bit fiddling around manually there. And that is as per the previous live stream where I finally wanted to publish this because it was hundreds of hours of work. Um, unfortunately, one of the largest infrastructure update re-enablement stuff. This also includes patching not only T2 but also quite some packages including um, the Linux kernel, maybe even had hard-coded GCC for building some stuff. So had T2 and some other packages. So this touched quite some packages including patching a lot of packages to even compile because that's not upstream and we are not there yet. So an earlier build of Musil has Xorg working, but this build does not yet have Xorg. Although probably most parts of Xorg you could build if you want to run this on the desktop, that should certainly work. The only showstopper of last night's rebuild is actually the Mesa, the 3D library, and that was some stupid XML pool or whatever stuff header uh, not being there yet. Some old bug, I have never seen that. Um, it was fixed three, four, five years ago in autoconf. Now it's using Manson, so no idea why that header is not there. Um, that's probably the summary. So this is not for everyone to use at home. Welcome everyone in the audience, Danny Christian, Detard. And um, yeah, so this is more if you want to be bleeding edge on the forefront of technology, want to try totally experimental, not only T2, but Musil, ceiling and stuff. So not for production, not for your regular desktop. And mind you, again, the last time I tried, I couldn't get Qt5 to build for my OBS streaming. Also, maybe we try this now another day. And the biggest thing, of course, now, the only thing is now I spent so many hundreds of hours of work on this earned probably six and a half dollars of YouTube AdSense with that. Certainly not the, probably need to rethink how I invest my time here, but somehow I'm tempted now not only to build this for PowerPC, but also MIP64 because um, amazing architectures, but I'm also actually tempted to get Qt5 built and live stream from that with OBS here. And last but not least, certainly um, rebuild this cleanly with uh, to have a completely clean ISO because again the published one has ceiling but the only benef benefit for you however is that in this ISO although it's larger but whatever probably you have the old version so you can probably run ceiling 8 okay you can't because it's broken okay fine then this is a little bit wasted of space but anyway you get the idea I um, yeah probably this building this for PowerPC, maybe for the P3 or something, um, next would be automating and fiddling out all the last remaining bits and pieces here, but I'm actually quite satisfied. How, however, there are some small glitches, right? Um, I'm not sure why, whatever is this user ID and group ID or something, so there is some small stuff off by a little bit, as you probably can see by the PSX output here. And if we shut this down, we have at least here some kill all whatever so some small binaries are a little bit off by something again i have not analyzed why um, and again totally nice tetris kind of sudoku not paid advertisement though puzzle for you if you want to take a look why there are some small glitches feel free to diagnose this and send your findings and uh, wait a second, I didn't want, did I not say boot C? Oh, okay, I forgot the, um, so two times the charm of boot, whatever, doesn't hurt. Uh, also, yeah, this is, a, as per the previous, what I mentioned uh, again here, compressed stuff, not a big deal. Um, as a final note, if you want to learn something and like to see me fail and whatever, zoom to, ah, I wanted to click. Zoom to fit. So one last thing, we could actually check what is up with the grub module there. Um, and you might wonder why do I not 
just use what is there of Grub2, but uh, most distributions certainly have their own glue there of whatever they need with the kernel updates and uh, whatever other distribution specific stuff. And I usually try to run as less automatic stuff as possible to have an understanding how this stuff works, also where to place EFI binaries and stuff. So um, in my opinion, not the worst thing to have a little script glue to have this a little bit more under your own control where stuff goes in regards to the bootloader. And yeah, so you see, this is also why it needs a little bit of support glue power PC. So there it's, I think, did I test Spark? Not entirely sure though, but also only on this channel, eventually coming testing Grub2 on Spark and maybe MIPS, I don't know. Does it support? I think it supports some MIPS though, maybe some, but maybe not the Octane, but some other, whatever. Yeah, so much more uh, amazing, uh, amazing now. This, uh, th there you see the difference between everything is broken and just after a couple of nights, stuff is a little bit more amazing. Um, okay, more, uh, yeah, but it's it's, uh, it's KVM, right? But um, anyway, but has it if you right? So no, this has not yet. If he if he is next, I just was too tempted to uh, get this new that at least we are as we have been in 20 years ago where Rock Linux was usually, there were not so many, there were only 20 or 50 distributions, not one, 1004 I think we have been now. And in, in like 2000 or 1998, with a few distributions there, Rock Linux was usually on the forefront of latest and greatest, the, the Gen 2 of uh, source distributions because Gen 2 became a bigger thing, obviously, something like that sort. Um, Yes, yeah, so this QEMO is, uh, by the way, a fun fact, running on the ThinkPad here, so con Intel Core i7, whatever. Um, and uh, as, as I said, it's ceiling usual. Um, I'm also, um, you see, my cur curiosity, uh, probably not the most healthy for my income. Um, otherwise, I should probably hack on exact scan now. But otherwise, I would also be interested not only to rebuild this from scratch totally clean, also this is O2 optimized because we found ceiling would be so much slower size optimized. Uh, actually, like more than two times as slow or so with GCC. However, ceiling has two size optimizations. Ceiling has OS and OZ. And that is probably from Apple stuff because I think they're whatever Apple was using before, or did they even patch, maybe they even patched GCC back in the day. Anyway, um, and we found in previous ceiling benchmarks there, a couple of videos ago in the long video archive history, we found that um, with ceiling or clang, OS does not size optimize as much and only OZ does op size optimize much more. And now with, so you, it's of course, choice is always good, right? I find this pretty cool. And the benefit of this is we could actually try to use, so not only more work for me, right? So theoretically we would need to wire out those options to T2 config options here for, which fun fact we could also check out here, svncrhttps. Or test building here inside that. Uh, also, probably, why does it not? Um, the edge, oh, the edge client is zero. And then that, and then that. And so, normally, I should wire up those options to have this as choices. Um, just that in GCC, they would not have had any effect, um, but whatever. And because now I'm curious if with the OS of ceiling, the performance of ceiling would still be good and we would create a slightly smaller image um, in general. And also for the VAIO P, I need this theoretically, but the, again, the next thing is the bloody binary only driver obviously doesn't work so much to you have the latest and greatest, most compact, highly optimized Linux distributions, and then you can't use decades old binary only crap uh, graphic drivers. Also, I probably should stop this video here because it certainly was too many CPU cycles in my own preview of that sort here. And uh, yeah, because it drops frames. Um, again, if next. And um, yeah, theoretically, I should actually test if we 
can build T2 here, at least emerge some packages. And I write biggest note, I hope the checkout is soon finished. Yeah, by the way, I wonder, did I wire up, um, did I wire up IPv6 for SVN? Maybe I did though. Not sure if, but okay, uh, QEMU does not tunnel IPv6 in the default user setting, so. Anyway, um, for this kind of speci uh, specific, very specific alternative C library and uh, compiler stuff, you definitely need to copy the config. Uh, normally, if you do a GCC glibc config where the default settings of T2 match GCC glibc, you don't need to be very uh, worried or specific about the configuration. However, this um, with LLVM ceiling, you need to be, or well, to avoid a lot of problems and to, to make sure most of the stuff works, you need to copy the config. And the config is, so normally you could just, yeah, so normally you could just run, also T2 trunk. Normally you could just run um, scripts config, and that would be okay for old GCC glibc builds. However, because this is special, let's, create config and copy BTC SDE config should be here and that to default um, because then you have and course is devil missing what CC okay I'll, I changed to CC and now I don't have probably there's a small thing so you want to create a zoom link from C link to CC for now as a small thing that only I find and also um, we need to change this in the T2 package that if you select ceiling, then you get this link. Does this work now? Um, failed with CRT and as, okay, so, okay, so yeah, be warned that you can't yet compile much stuff. Um, I will probably spin some updates. So you can already enjoy this a little bit. Um, some, as you see, some startup files missing. Um, this is a manual fiddling. I've installed and planted there some manually. This is why they are missing in this package. So yeah, um, compiler does not fully work. <clears throat> but um, yeah, you can still play around, bring them, tinker them uh, themselves. I will probably another day or either if someone patches something. Um, I have, as for the P3 ISO image, I have a directory. So for the P3 one, if I publish patches like the missing Startup files, I will publish them with a directory named name of the ISO file there. So, yeah, we probably want to hold off a little bit. Anyway, I wanted to have this published for reference, even for myself. If I destroy it again, like the previous night, then I have at least a snapshot. Last but not least, all right, we can't. I wanted, last but not least, um, check here the setup tool one. The stone modules here are shell code here in etc st stone D. Um, and last but not least, we could take a closer look, but um, it's not as easy to find why this um, default run um, without the config, because the environment is slightly different when it's running at the end of the binary installer, because now it's already running in the full system, so it would take some extra effort to replicate and take a look now. Comments to the audience, uh, they watched the videos for a long time and wanted to know why you seem to prefer to use Subversion. Um, because when I started, uh, Git has no benefit for me. Git is only overcomplicated stuff. Each time I work on P3, RSX or Linux kernel, um, I need to Google stuff. It's I find Git totally intuitive. Um, also, um, for, so for me, it would only be a waste of time. Each time I would do something, I would need to Google something. Also, when we started with this, there was no Git. There was not even Mercurial. Or by the way, I, I Git, it's a little bit funny anecdote of history that um, Git became so popular because if you want distributed version control system, I found Mercurial, or how it's pronounced, much more intuitive to use, more like subversion and still distributed, I think, as far as I know. But um, we were one of the early adapters of subversion. So when we started with subversion in Rock Linux times 2000, three or two or whenever, there was only mostly sub uh, CVS, the really old piece of garbage, 
um, that I certainly didn't like because it wasn't atomic. It didn't have me. Was it? Uh, it didn't have moves. It wasn't atomic for multiple files. It was totally clusterfuck. And of course, as BitKeeper, it's of course hilarious that Linus Torvalds first was using BitKeeper and then wrote um, the Git. But Git, in my opinion, is too cryptic and um, yeah, whatever. Um, probably I will use it a little bit more. But I said this before, if we get uh, 20 new contributors to T2, so if you all start selling patches and using it, then we could switch to Git. But as long as I'm the 95% a contributor right now for the unsuccessful woman distribution, then I use what I am used to and works for me. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that. Um, because why should I switch if it only wastes my time? I already waste too much time with all this stuff and yeah, works works amazing for me. So why should I change it? But again, if you all contribute, then we change it. And, but until then, probably something new is invented and then everyone is using the latest and greatest whatever stuff. Um, so yeah, this grub module, let's take a quick look. And um, so that is a module and the glue that we need to put in there. So not only do we need to have here some better x86 integration because right now it's hard coding. Um, right now it's hard coding uh, VM Linux without compression for PowerPC. And even here, power. Uh, this is a power, <laughs> the, the logo, there was a PowerPC logo. Um, create, where would the menu entry, create kernel list. Yeah, here is, by the way, VM Linux. So somewhere we have already PowerPC, I guess. Yeah, Arch PowerPC. Um, where do we assign Arch? Oh, Arch we do very early. And then we certainly want um, for Arch, maybe we try to do this here if um, again, this is only proof of concept. Later, as we add Spark and maybe MIPS or something, we will have here more stuff. But for now, maybe if Arch equals, also we probably want to, oh, wait a second, is Arch, name? probably it's, uh, it's I3456888, huh? oh, damn it. Mm, always, uh, anyway, um, probably we can for quick hack. Quick hacks are always the best, right? Um, but a final word to the subversion versus uh, Git never change a running system, right? It's, it's running for me, so something of that sort. Uh, match anything with x86 just for uh, 64 and 32 bit variants. I think this probably should mostly cover it. If this conflicts with anything else in the future, we could change it, but whatever. Then set here the name, substitute probably of uh, where would be so x. So, oh, wait a second version, it substitutes the version away. Um, and I don't have. GPM here, how do I? Yeah, okay, then let's type all of that again. So then x equals version x we have there for the image indeed. So substitute if. equals x86, then x2 um, vm linux2 vm linux, like that, I guess, something of that sort. It could already work, I guess, we can try it in a second, but we also need to can save this already and then, wait a second, what was the name? This was create kernel list. And this should run automatically on first installation. Create boot menu. Create kernel list. Boot grub. Grub config. This is a new. Hmm, it looks okay though. Not really sure why. 
so grub config. That's what I mean with we will probably not have it too easy to test unless maybe we delete the file that could probably trigger that. Could probably try that so stone grub2 and then also only life this typo for oh, and end. That looks better. Let's see if that creates something here. VM Linux, it looks right, I guess. And now if we delete the file, this could maybe trigger this mode of boot grub. Yeah, so install now. Actually, now it works. Hmm. So much to testing that. Yeah, then I need to test this with the next ISO. Um, but anyway, you know how to work around this. And um, I guess it should probably be able to boot. Um, let's go to user source t2 package x86. Here for legacy reasons, it's an x86, doesn't really matter too much. Um, I, in my opinion, it's still the x, but yeah, we could move it somewhere else, like base, whatever, but yeah, I could also leave it there. ETC stone, copy this module for grub2 back here to stone mod that. This one line changed. Let's reboot and see if this really boots and then commit this. And um, sounds reasonable. Change just for the sake of change often causes unneeded headache. Yeah, also a lot of time we have um, the automatic change log generation and uh, nightly tracker, you, I would need to touch not only all the conversion and whatnot, but also some automated scripts that hook into that and nightly SVN up and run the stuff. So, yeah, now this boots. And uh, this is also a good in any case that we have done it because we want to build all the regular images. Um, I, as I mentioned this in previous live streams, release season. And that means that um, we will soon build all the images for PowerPC, MIPS, Spark, ARM, um, HPPA, and uh, whatever I usually build. I think that was probably usually built like five. You probably, yeah, probably building yeah, more like, yeah, this has become more. I usually build 32-bit, uh, five, 586-ish, AMD64, uh, Spark32, Spark64, and PowerPC, Power, oh, Jesus, where is it? Six, and now H HPPA, MIP64, um, probably by default bootable on Octane, I think. <coughs> um, although I could probably, um, yeah, I need so many stuff to do. I probably need to check the format. Not that people constantly unsubscribe here when we do too many live streams. Comments in the audience, wrong video, but I think you really like Kth B. Kth B, okay, Kth. Uh, Box Royale switches, they inside are much different from Cherry switches, but they perfectly address Cherry's issues. Tactile also um, totally be done for a group by. Um, I have not yet ordered, I was just checking. Um, I could, uh, although this is for the other video, right? Um, I've not ordered this yet. If this supplier where I could order this other totally overpriced thing um, has those, I could actually really try this. Um, yeah, oops, also on live on YouTube, throwing an iPhone on the table and then let's commit this. I think I, did I dear de de client or, yeah, I did. So also we can test, let's test the commit script here of, yeah, we've only changed grub, so that, also that is hidden, because let's move that window a little bit. Fixed grub two for x86 uh, vm. So yeah, at least this Musil test install was good for something. Oops, why is that obviously? Uh, 
and um, then although I think the regular builds might still include grub I'm not yet really sure you see so many options and alternatives not really sure how I should deal with um, grub legacy but maybe totally maybe remove yeah maybe we remove also grub legacy is so tested to test some special quirks and features in t2 booting on machines where the regular grub legacy would not boot from all our projects and, and vintage hardware from back in the day um, but yeah next is also efi so i will probably because it's probably fair to say i don't want so many options right if you want to customize this you can always do that this to t2 just edit the source and build whatever with it by the way fun fact the, the puppy linux people sometimes build with t2 at least some or half or most of the binaries uh, also fun fact they could also contribute a little bit more upstream <coughs> anyway um iso linux um iso linux is only a master boot record isn't it um the the benefit of grub2 is we have the same then because uh, some stuff is historically was really crappy like yaboot from powerpc and zelo for spark because they, they both because the elf stuff is so compatible on x86 you can't reuse system libraries for example for x2 and for x2 reading extended 234 the yaboot and zelo people for the PowerPC and Spark bootloader, they just linked in the system lib elf fs from mkfs um, x2 and, and check x2 and stuff. And this always caused problems and conflicts and always broke. So each time I build, every, every other year I built Spark and PowerPC ISO, they never booted, they never built, they, I always had to tinker around there for hours. It was more one uh, getting this esoteric linking system elf stuff with new symbols like 64 bit multiply of runtime stuff, what you have seen yesterday, and it always broke. It was a nightmare. And so I like one bootloader that is the only benefit, although it is large, but at least one bootloader for all of them, hopefully soon, for PowerPC that is already tested. And I personally, so I delayed Grub2 very long. I stayed on x86. So not only did I stay, stay on Yaboot and Zilo for the fun architectures, I also stayed on Grub because our Grub was just too perfectly patched to be perfect. Um, and uh, yeah, never changed the running system. However, now with fully encrypted uh, portable root SSDs, I, for that part, and also booting from LLVM, so our servers, our server nodes are already booting um, this um, LVM rate stuff and so on and that is certainly much more full featured and, and stuff and that is grub2 that is and yeah then I'm I don't want to debug and stuff also is this ISO Linux not totally deprecated in, in the meantime and not even maintained maybe at least I, I once heard maybe um, anyway that is a grub2 story just that because I delayed this for a decade um, now we have to do the enablement and yeah it's mostly there um, yeah, it's booting already, master boot record booting. Next is EFI for Denny and my uh, build servers, um, which I don't boot with USB sticks, so that is why I've not done this yet. But the installation part um, boots already manually installed, but whatever. So next is automation. And um, yeah, one, boot, one bootloader to rule them all, certainly and nice to have one code base to debug and tinker on and, um, and stuff. And um, yeah. Uh, nothing, I just cut boot T2 USB it. Um, yeah, so for old fashioned boot, so well, we have a script, this ISO 2, but yeah, um, you could if you wanted um, do that there. That is uh, misc, misc archive ISO 2 stick. It's a little bit, yeah, this uh, is for this you need to have a matching grub 1 there, um, but I agree it is much simpler. That is, yeah. Um, much simpler to just copy EFI files to in fat formatted sticks. So yeah, that, that will be coming next. Um, not forgotten. And uh, to finish that sort that I diverted from a little bit, um, I will most likely make it so that 32-bit x86 is using master boot record by default. You can always tinker that by the default. And I will assume that x86 
64, AMD 64, 64-bit will use AFI. And yes, I'm aware the very first x86 64-bit AMD stuff does not support AFI, but yeah, whatever. Also, the Sony Value P supports 32-bit supports AFI, so yeah, that also doesn't match. But if you have, you can still boot the Sony Value P with master boot record. If you have such esoteric either totally new 32-bit or totally old 64-bit, then yeah, either boot it master boot record or um, build your own. Can't do everything here. And yeah, you could build hybrid, but this is even more effort. And what I don't like with this hybrid, hybrid meaning embedding the master boot record and the EFI stuff. But the problem is then you need to compile GRUB2 twice. And I don't like uh, this. I have done this with, um, for example, the E2FS procs, like on Spark. And I've done this with UDEV for a diet libc version for our init rd and building all those packages always twice for this esoteric stuff is, is never fun so i don't really want to get into that again i it's already too many combinations so yeah that's the plan and yeah probably should be good enough for the most part um more comments so basically you have to put the iso on cd and then um but yeah well you can run if you want to test this but again this is uh, state of the art partially broken you can just run it in qemu um, in previous times like a decade ago when optical media was the thing i usually wrote those burned those to rewritables um, and for back in the day i used this iso2 stick script that not sure if it worked on ubuntu or whatever debian but at least on t2 systems uh, the only drawback it, it's very s specific and needs a grub one installed but yeah probably don't try this wait another day you waited a couple of months no probably um better to wait um either run it in virtual machine for testing um or but again compiler is partially not perfect there and uh, then if we do next but the problem is of course you see if i do here the in uh, fiddling stuff this live streams are not the most successful unfortunately and people start to unsubscribe so i probably need to yeah should have not broken the second more live stream channel that the reason i stream mostly on this main channel is then at least i earn three dollars a day on the second more live stream stuff it's not yet monetized because for the new youtube ruling we need 1000 subscribers that is why we still accumulate there with sometimes a little bit random content and the second more live stream ch channel was just copyright strike by apple for commenting their amazing <coughs> or not ios crap stream there so thank you very much for that can just check online can we go live on the second channel but i expect it's still no due to community guidelines strikes or copyright issues you can't stream at that time thank you very much apple for this bullshit you want people to comment and pr your, ch your crap and then you copyright strike them like ellie the computer guy or what his name is so thanks for that. Um, yeah, in the future, we probably really need to do the random live stream stuff on the random live streams channel. Otherwise, we push your people away. That is certainly not what we want. Um, your live streams are very informative. Uh, keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I was very much aware that this more random lengthy live stuff is too esoteric for people who are here for repair stuff of mini disks of uh, vintage computer stuff. Um, it's only said that people unsubscribe immediately um, without leaving a comment why they do that. I always say if you unsubscribe totally, of course, you can do that, but leave me a comment why that I can do better. And um, yeah, probably we need to ramp up our triple A video production of Hewlett Packard and Spark and um, Octane and fun stuff like that and Detart and uh, Intanium. Not forgotten. And yeah, so this is uh, at least one chapter, but you see so many efforts, at least quite some stuff fixed for Musil and Grub2. Um, next, but there you see it, we are not over yet, right? So this is only first of proof, first proof of concept. Next, we need to uh, really get all the Musil stuff automatically building. Fun fact, we can already shut down this. Um, and so many options and like, do you, yeah, iffy or not and uh, sealing um, is a problem with sealing is also you can have this a secondary compiler and it's really 
difficult and exhaustive to write options for all of this because you can have it as secondary compiler or system compiler and then you can as because only if, if you have it as system compiler theoretically you could mix this with GCC then you don't have this compiler RT this the number of options exponentially really getting out of hand here I will probably um, you see that it, I spent week, days and weeks uh, just implementing this kind of option certainly doesn't make the most sense um, it probably makes most sense to support GCC glibc and otherwise well right now you can't build glibc anyway um, anyway in this combination but otherwise if you want this more non gnus uh, these are probably the two main configurations either gnu or not gnu and yeah again the problem is i've done this already um, some some nights ago some months ago and it is really a total pay, uh, pain in the ass uh, that is this vm here where i've built this and uh, that you've seen the other day and the problem is if i start this build from scratch you have seen each time i do this there is something broken upstream changes maybe between llvm 8 and 9 or what we are at um, and uh, now i need to figure out all the details and the problem is the next time i do this like the runtime crt start stuff i should spend some extra effort the last time i've only manually tinkered around until it worked and this time i should really um, take a closer look um, we have also still some build issues like smart tools so even although a lot of stuff built now a couple of packages like smart tools maybe even this um, undefined reference to udif i3 i had another one like this was it gpm or something of that sort function definition not allowed you know this is something else maybe i guess or file not found this is also yeah this this gpm package is also i uh, saw already that depend what error depend to prevent necessary warnings what the heck yeah this some packages are also even with gcc a little bit yeah but um i probably next I probably ignore this for a couple of weeks because we have too many other important stuff to do which is building all the regular ISO images and adding EFI support uh, on the way for everyone playing along at home and um, I solved this do you ask for are you from last night um, are you good uh, Good, keep doing. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so as usual, when we just keep keep discussing stuff, then the live streams always become super long, and probably keep people from watching it. So the first five minutes certainly a quick dive into how to install in general, especially with this few quirks, this ceiling based musel image head. And if you are you from last night, I forgot the name. Sorry. Um, if you are the one who is trying this at home with Linux from scratch. Um, I solved the one issue with Musil I linked in the, um, I think I hard coded this from, for now, right? There was this here, Musil, I guess. Uh, Musil or, um, did I not hard code that somewhere? Ah, here, yeah, uh, probably this hot text patch here. Yeah, I hard coded linking in here this build in, but this is totally, I will not even commit this kind of extremely hot hex. Um, these are the details I need to research, probably even read the ceiling sources. Um, how they intended this, I, I don't believe that should be like this, like hard coding that. But you see, I linked in this built in lip ceiling, like hard linking against the static library that it's included in the Musil C library. Uh, it probably is how it also works with static libcc, I guess, uh, libgcc. But it's not fixing. I tried rebuilding smart tools. By the way, fun fact. Um, so it's not fixing smart tools. So you could probably fix smart tools by also hard coding, linking that in, but that's not the right solution. So I don't need this for this ISO image for testing. So the next time I rather read the 
ceiling sources and figure out what they were thinking if it needs some special with maybe it has some option but that's for live stream another light this stream getting too long i could by the way uh, check if this g what was it gp i'm right if this yeah also this, this code is so crafty old-fashioned legacy craft it's uh, it's hilarious um could check if this build error disappears magically by no LTO link time optimization. Um, also, fun fact: this published ISO. Although yes, it's missing this startup files. Um, so unfortunately, the compiler doesn't work. It's of course really a showstopper. Um, but maybe it's anyway nice to play. I will probably maybe if if you're interested in this ISO, leave me in the comments below. If a couple of people are interested, I could peel those. Uh, figure out which of those files we need and publish a hotfix tarball with those included. Um, okay, this still doesn't work with cross uh, GPM. Yeah, this, this you see the old fashioned Linux package. It's, it's not amazing source and why we probably want to write in complete own microkernel system for the fun of it. Yeah, that's it for today. That is a summary. Um, at least some outcome finally and some small quirks. Quick, uh, um, the problem is with this bloody Apple copyright strike, it's also hilarious. In my opinion, this should not be like this. Apple is live streaming something publicly and I comment a little bit. And due to that, uh, if I would live stream in Hollywood blockbuster, I would totally understand, but not this, this stupid news there. I totally didn't expect that. Um, the problem is I, I would even agree that uh, to delete this bloody video, I don't even need this crappy video. But um, I think this video is even blocked. This, this live stream was only four minutes long. But the consequence of this is, by the way, I have my copy, coffee is cold now, but I have a microwave here. And this nice office here, um, in, in contrast to our regular office. Um, I could, uh, so I don't even, I would not even argue that I want this stupid failed live stream. can totally delete this. It, it's even blocked, uh, blocked worldwide um, there. The, the real issue is that my secondary more live channel now has it, it's like still working but it has live streaming rights blocked for maybe 90 days that is totally silly i contacted google of course the google support as usual reads a fact reads a fucking manual uh, re, reads the frequently asked questions i ask cases is such a silly no-brainer crap case we can even delete this video but can we re-enable live streaming no you can't you need 90 days if you want it Earlier than 90 days, contact Apple's like, yeah, thank you very much, Google, amazing support. And um, I did not even want it to file a copy, file a dispute, um, but Google basically told me, if you want your live streaming back faster than 90 days, you need to click on file a dispute button, which I did not even want it. So only due to that situation, I actually clicked on the, I dispute this and claimed their fair use public video and I only commented this in shitty quality. Let's see what happens. So far this is already probably a week or so. So in one week Apple has not reviewed this stupid dispute there. Um, they only cash in hundred thousand of euro from our sold apps but block our more live channel. That is how you are doing with big companies in 2019. The problem is which I'm not even I can still upload videos to the more live channel which so I could record something and upload something that would be working right now, but because I clicked on the I dispute this stupid crappy copyright crap claim there, that click with clicking on this button and typing there my name as pseudo signature, I agreed to Google's terms that if I dispute this um, illegally with uh, no hard case terms there, they, this could result in my account being deleted. I only hope that, they all, first of all, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's the, this is right. Dealing with Oilers, with the Silicon Valley companies, in my opinion, the whole thing is also not acceptable. It's not acceptable that they, although yes, my second channel is small, my main channel is medium size. But in my opinion, the whole situation is bananas. It should not be that also, if I would have streamed a Hollywood blaster, blockbuster, okay. Also, in length, if I would have streamed 90 minutes, Hollywood blockbuster, I would accept, okay, fine. My live streaming rights are being revoked. But for this small piece of garbage, uh, not even four minutes long, um, just the start of an Apple live stream and not even in full quality, but in a window with me 
commenting this, uh, even wanted to work on the GMA 500 stuff, pull pull stuff. Uh, this situation is silly. This is not how it should be in 2019. Um, this should not be blocked like this. And even if it does, it should not um, immediately. Imagine Linus Tech Tips would have done this and they would have had their live streaming blocked for 90 days. Also, they don't live stream as much, but whatever. Uh, this situation is bizarre. And it's also bizarre that claiming fair use could result in my account being delayed, deleted. It's like, <laughs> what the heck? It's like, seriously, Google. Um, also, this is hilarious, right? That the support tells me the only thing you can get your live streaming back is by disputing that. In my opinion, this should not be the only way. I could still say, I, okay, this video can be deleted. It's, it's a crap video, I don't need it. But maybe give me live streaming back. You probably, we all agree that this is a silly case here. And there you see support following their uh, one, one by one points there and uh, totally no flexibility. They could really, in my opinion, some senior account consultant, key account consultant stuff there at Google's YouTube business stuff could really decide, yeah, this is really, really silly. Okay, you will, if you delete this because you don't want this, we unblock your live streaming, but they are not even that flexible. This is really um, how why we, all the recurring big companies are not your friend. And also if you're a fanboy of Intel and AMD, which I am neither of, certainly criticize the AMD also often enough. Um, companies like Apple and Google are not your friend. I mean, certainly Google not anyway. Probably that is the number one reason why we should definitely uh, make an ungoogled Android version because it's probably what the world needs. Um, Christian, yeah, Ellie got this right. Uh, removed for the same reason uh, a while back. Um, I saw this from, usually not following him, but I saw this from Louis Rossman. Uh, he made there some fun of it, I think. Um, but um, I, I thought, actually, I, I, I didn't follow this up on Ellie's, Ellie's a computer guy there, but it looked recent, so maybe the same video as mine, which is hilarious and bananas. Also, my video was, my live stream was four minutes or three or of just the beginning, it's hilarious. Um, and um, yeah, also, I mean, Apple, Apple relies on all the multiplication of all the news outlets, and then they don't even want that people comment on live and applaud, applaud and oh, and ah, and it's an iPhone. And, um, yeah, it's, it's um, hilarious that uh, repeating marketing material results in a copyright strike. Totally don't agree with this. This is also why. I only hope they don't delete the whole account because, of course, internally both of the channels are like one Gmail. I mean, it's also hilarious, right? That Google runs this YouTube based on Gmail account stuff. It's like uh, seriously. I only my only hope is because I certainly don't want to use my medium uh, sized channel here. Um, the only thing is it's my secondary more live channel. If I lose that, then you're yeah, not too much of a big of a deal. I only wanted to grow this a second alternative just for this kind of life stuff. Mostly waiting to get 1000 subscribers to finally be able to earn $3 a day with it for the excessive live streaming. But um, due to that only because my secondary channel is not as important and I didn't agree with copyright striking over marketing live content in general is why I clicked this button. I also don't agree with that Google cannot unlock this. I would even have agreed with, okay, fine, I don't need this crappy content. Um, you can keep it, but at least give me my live streaming back. Um, and it's bloody really, but there you see, it's probably also person dependent. If I would have reached a more switched on person there on Google support stuff, maybe they would have unlocked this. Um, because I, I basically didn't even say, hey, I want this video. I said, okay, this was a crap shit try. You can delete this, but can I really please, I could even live with live streaming for three weeks or something, but 90 days is really bloody long. Make it maybe at least only 14 days, but they were really totally unflexible. They're really not cool from them, in my opinion. Uh, also, um, leave me in the bites of a Christian. I think you still have not told me which keyboard you brought. This still drives me nuts. Still curious, did you buy a cheap ass um, Chinese no name crap there, or did you buy some quality material? Um, also, which switches? And um, leave me in the comments below as usual, by the way, although someone just left me a comment right with this, uh, whatever box switches. Um, but 
Um, should I try on something alternative on Twitch? By the way, fun fact, if we grow, I would even consider also probably Linus Media's float plane group. They only invite the greatest and biggest YouTube creators. Um, maybe I would even open to, although we're probably way too small for that, uh, to support small companies like Linus Media Group there and their float plane business. Um, or this, but again, probably still too small for that until they open to public for everyone, I guess. Um, and because totally Google hears this, YouTube is totally not how we should be doing it. Um, or uh, Twitch, but of course, a similar bitchy company like Google, I guess. Or we should, like other, like um, Mika, Scott, or so, uh, run our own uh, whatever she is running there for her. Um, video business, but um, a bit cute not to streaming. Um, yeah, otherwise we have quite some bandwidth in the meantime. Well, of course, the thing is, of course, with this video streaming stuff, quite some bandwidth. Uh, we actually have some leftover bandwidth. Uh, I wonder if we should theoretically start to do that our own or uh, like Mika Scott, probably, I guess, not really. You see, I'm so busy, I can't follow all the YouTubers. I follow probably already way too many of all the peripheral side stuff I realize there. But leave me in the comments below which live streaming stuff because I certainly don't want to support Google forever here. And uh, we certainly, as you know in general, I support small creators and small business and medium-sized business. And certainly this is totally shit stuff. I, I always was aware that dealing with Google will be shit. I just didn't expect that with such small channel stuff we already run into issues. Um, Christian writes Arc Racer um, on the Chroma. Okay, although I noticed it. Um, more things I think should sell for streaming, at least for now, and archive everything. A bit cute, shoot something. Yeah, maybe as we, but uh, yeah. Um, Maybe, depending on how the out outcome goes, maybe, also maybe we should try Twitch for just getting some more people in. Um, that would be probably something, maybe we would like live streaming, live streaming random T2 building stuff, like all the power PC and whatever images there, um, could bring some more community here together and then eventually, maybe in a year or something, um, self host this uh, maybe eventually. Add to the keyboard of Christian, notice that entirely sync with what? It's not entirely in sync with the direct, so I lifted the key pair, rubber dome with a metal washer that clicks a lot. What <laughs> What the heck? Okay. Um, yeah, maybe um, I will check. So first of all, that's it for today. Also, um, isn't straightforward. Yeah, so like, yes, um, I'm I'm a very detailed, um, although I think Mika Scott is using some ready-made software there of all those new container bits and pieces. Um, certainly I can't run this from our Doxus cable stuff, but I have some leftover bandwidth in the data center. I'm totally aware of this. Um, also, I probably would need to upgrade data center stuff uh, for the bandwidth and probably like uh, hardware accelerated um, video re-encoding, that is of course is a big thing, um, sending there your high bandwidth stuff and re-encoding this into small bits and pieces and then of course a massive bandwidth. Um, and um, hey, zero drop frames here from this. Um, stream this over, do we IPv6? I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe. Is this, anyway, through your... Um, um, yeah. Don't know what uh, theory the, he used, but drew someone create a live stream from a server just good enough for a couple of hundred people. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, Benvis is the thing, and this is why of certainly float plane is also investing there quite some stuff. But uh, something for maybe in a year's time or, or gradually over the time. Maybe I will try a little bit Twitch just to see if we can get some fresh new people in here. Um, because it would be totally amazing. Of course, right now my plan of financing uh, open source stuff with YouTube live streaming, not that the most successful with $3 a day, certainly can't live off that. Um, experiment, uh, probably need to evaluate uh, how I will continue with this because I can't live off $3 a day forever. 
and um, maybe the better plan is to do more AAA pre-edited videos, but uh, time will show. Also, Detroit need to drop you an email soon. And thank you everyone for watching. Always amazing to have a commun community here. Hope you learned something. I hope you get some insight of how much work it is to keep all these bits and pieces working uh, together. And uh, see you soon for some IT news sometime soon and all the other IT and MIPS, uh, uh, SGI origin. Um, 200 stuff and yeah also fun fact we could eventually try to do this ceiling musical stuff on MIP64 but I think it will not run on the old Octane or Origin stuff and is only revision 6 so yeah too much time yeah see you next time and Christian apparently mechanical keyboards are not a real one the key shaft has a notch that pushes against the metal plate on the side and it's even buckling spring or similar huh? fun stuff Thanks for sharing this and hope to see you soon and I also need to evaluate now. Maybe I try really very experimental switches. I will probably, I will actually be curious if they re really have stock because it's some European company, they list uh, like this uh, tech, tech, uh, by the way, <laughs> probably tech, uh, tech, tech, ever. Anyway, uh, probably saw some keyboard soldering coming up then and maybe if they have this experimental something uh, whatever was the comment, let's see here at, uh, I closed it already, probably I still have it, uh, 2019, always best to have comments on your Android and your, no, it already probably, wrong. oh no, here it is still, um, yeah, Kaith Box Royale switcher, so maybe I try this just because. Um, as I said previously, otherwise it would be too boring to just have MX Brown there. Two times certainly doesn't make sense. And um, yeah, welcome everyone. You have something to play, although compiler slightly broken. Ping me below if you really want to use this ISO. Um, if you want, you have it there now. And otherwise, see you soon for the next fun stuff to come.